All right, guys, give me 32 here. Check it out. We're sitting over here in the Freedom Office. Uh, first of all, I just want to say this video is going to be tough for me to do because I've got some mixed emotions about this thing, okay? Um... Uh, yeah, Matt Hoover, really nice guy. Uh, he's kind of a happy-go-lucky type fellow. He's always been kind of a jovial, kind of goofy kind of character, you know, does his videos. And he's always challenged the uh, ATF in a couple decisions and some other things that are going on. And uh, he uh, got involved with a gentleman named uh, Justin Irvin and uh, started uh, doing videos on this thing called the Auto Key Card. And uh, by that, he associated himself with Mr. Irvin, and Mr. Irvin had the ATF approach him and basically took him into custody because they said that the auto key card, this card, uh, was considered to be a machine gun and he was selling machine guns. Well, by association, and I'm not going to get into the details because I really don't know what the details are, but uh, this gentleman, uh, Matt Hoover, with CRS Firearms, the YouTube channel, was doing videos to promote this item. And, uh, you know, the, and I guess, you know, Justin uh, talked to an ATF agent and said, is this a, considered a, something that's evil and bad and illegal? And that guy said, no. Well, then a, another office said, yes. Well, anyway, Matt was drug into this whole thing and indicted uh, on several counts of just this craziness. And I don't know the specifics of it, but this is the hardest thing. So um, I'm friends with John Crump. Uh, he's with Ammo Land. He does a lot of independent stuff and is friends with a lot of folks in the uh, ATF. And uh has a lot of associates he's able to get information and by that uh sometimes he'll send me stuff right off the bat and uh yesterday uh he and i talked rich and i talked and it appears that uh both justin and matt were found guilty and the case is really weak it's so much so that the the uh the the district attorney uh, in that case was said, you know, we don't have to prove that this thing was a machine gun. It's just that these guys were doing something bad. I think that's what it was about. So, uh, anyway, so this is an article, uh, written by John Crump over there at Ammo Land. And, uh, you know, he, he's a really cool dude. Uh, and this is something I normally am happy go lucky on my videos too, but this is some serious stuff. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to read this to you and I'm going to tell you some thoughts and prayers about this guy. Uh, Justin Irvin and Matt Hoover, CRS Firearms, found guilty in the auto key card case. And the thing that alarms me the most about this is that uh, throughout this whole adventure, you know, uh, Matt has been doing some videos short here, short there, saying how good it looked. You know, the, the DA, the feds couldn't prove anything and it was just... To me, I'm just like, okay, uh, I was really hoping that these guys were going to walk away. At least Matt, okay, because he really didn't do anything. It's like, as a YouTuber, um, say, for instance, we did a review on the trigger system or something like that, and then uh, it was perfectly so-called legal at the point in time that we did the video, but uh, the, the ATF comes back and goes, oh, no, that we consider that a machine gun, and all of a sudden, you're in possession. or it, it, Just crazy stuff. So... These are why I get really uh, upset about things because it's so wishy-washy and they're slivers of steel or uh, automatic weapons. This is an automatic weapon. So let's go ahead and talk about this. In the, uh, in the auto key card case, a jury found, a jury found Matthew Hoover, better known as CRS Firearms, on YouTube and Justin Irvin guilty. And I'm sitting there and this is Matt. I've talked to him several times. Nice guy. Really nice guy. Just, uh... I can't imagine what his family, his wife, his kids uh, are having to go through right now, okay? Because you think, and again, this is something, and this goes to everybody out there with the YouTube channel. Uh, if you're doing something, you feel like that you're touching into a region that might be considered or construed or even, even remotely an idea that this could be illegal down the road or pushing the limits. I'd suggest uh, do some serious soul searching and thinking before you go public with anything. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives charged a man with violating the NFA of 1934 for selling machine guns and conspiracy. Okay, the conspiracy part is what I'm like. How? What is a conspiracy? You guys tell me down in the comments down below. I'd appreciate it. Irvin faced an additional charge of structuring. The case stems from Mr. Irvin selling a metal card with an image inspired by a lightning link etched into it. Irvin sold the cards as a novelty and contract with Mr. Hoover to promote the card on his popular YouTube channel. And that's the thing is I don't think, you know, Matt probably didn't even think that this was something that's illegal. It's a metal card. It looks like a, a business card. Okay. At the ATF arrested Irvin April of 2021 and charged him with transferring unregistered machine guns. 
Mr. Irvin was denied bail and has been locked up since his arrest. Hoover used his platform to raise money for Irvin's legal defense. And I think this is where they're trying to get him on all kinds of stupid things. Oh, how dare you raise money to help this guy? The ATF viewed the fundraising activities as conspiracy and accused the men of running a criminal enterprise. Inventing stuff, inventing stuff. A year after Irvin was arrested, ATF raided Hoover's house and took him into custody. The time, this time, a Wisconsin judge released Hoover on his own recognizance, saying he didn't believe the YouTuber was a flight risk and a danger to society. He's not. This kid is a kid. He's th well, he's thirty something, but he's a kid. The U.S. attorney pushed for Hoover to be kept into custody, but her arguments fell short. Oh man, the trial ran for two weeks. Amaland News recapped the first week. This week, six of Hoover's viewers testified. Four of the witnesses stated that they bought an auto key card after seeing it on CRS's firearm to YouTube channel, but never intended to cut it out. Did Hoover sell the auto key card? I don't think he did. He just promoted it. Another witness nervously testified he bought the item to make a machine gun and accused CRS of encouraging his viewers to break the law. Wow, what a kind of arm twisting that the uh, DA have to make that guy do that. Or girl, or her, he, she, it, whatever, the shit. The final witness stated he was driving. Now, this is the interesting, the final witness. And I talked to John about this. This is just, this is fishy right here, okay? The final witness stated he was driving when he heard automatic gunfire. He said he pulled over and found three men in a field. Oh, you know, random field out there in the middle of the And the men had two auto key cars. One was cut out and one wasn't. The men gave him both because they couldn't get it to work. How much did these things cost? Would you just give away randomly to a stranger something that you think that it could be cost something? One was cut out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the man is a machinist and figured he could use his skills to get them the item to function. That's the guilty party right there. After hours of trying to failing, he threw away the key cut out on a key card when he saw the arrest of Irvin. He contacted a lawyer that arranged for him to turn it into the ATF. Man, I would have melted that some bitch and just got rid of it, kept my mouth shut. The ATM examiners also testified and showed t a 10 second low quality video of an AR 15 firing automatically with a cut out auto key card. This was no video before, there was no video before or after the firing. When pressed, the ATF admitted they could only get one of the three auto key cards they possessed to work. They also admitted to jamming the auto key card in a firearm to create a hammer follow. Okay, so hammer follow is basically, I had uh, an AR gold trigger that I couldn't figure out what was going on, and it would go full auto on me. Tested it out a couple times afterwards, said, yeah, we're going to rip that thing out. I just don't need it to happen in a competition. D DQ real quick. Um, the ATF also admitted that the Bureau assigned 12 agents to collect auto key cards from the public before being told to stop by their higher ups who thought it was a waste of money. Yeah. The ATF employees also admitted to taking classes on convincing a jury of their testimony. On Tuesday night, the U.S. Attorney's Office requested that the jury be instructed that the auto key card is a machine gun, whether it works or not, and that they must rule if the men transfer the items and if the men's intent was to transfer uncut lightning links. They also wanted the judge to prevent the defense from arguing the auto key card was not a machine gun. Let's this is just the shittiest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. The judge was annoyed at the prosecution for springing the request at such late hour. The judge refused most of the proposed jury instructions. The prosecution also asked for an hour and 30 minutes for closing arguments. What do you need? Additional time to convince this jury that they're evil? These guys are evil. They're evildoers. If you ever saw Matt with his hat turned sideways and he's doing his little thing, He's not, that guy, that kid's not evil. The judge told the prosecution to limit their arguments to 45 minutes. The defense asked for the case to be dismissed. The prosecution asked the judge to deny the request. The judge did not deny the request, but said she would wait until after the jury returned a verdict. The verdict is now in, and the jury deliberated for five hours. Okay, so just fishy, 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 fishy. And again, I realized that there is some stick, slippery slope in this whole thing construed. Well, one of the guys, uh, that uh, agency guy, uh, he mentioned a couple of comments in the ones down below. And I'm in agreement with you, man. If it's if it's if it smells like a fish, stinks like a fish, it probably could be a fish. So leave it the 
fudge alone, man. Mr. Irvin was found guilty on one charge of structuring. Structuring is a financial crime where a person structures withdrawals to avoid red flags. Withdrawals over $10,000 triggers the automatic investigation. I know because I tried to write a check to myself for over $10,000 and I got audited within five minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, withdrawals over triggers the automatic investigation. In addition to the structuring charge, he was also charged with conspiracy. Conspiracy is an agreement between two people or more to commit an illegal act. Okay, well, there's your definition. The final 10 charges were 10 counts of transferring machine guns. Poor old Matt was found guilty of five of the eight charges, including four charges of transferring machine guns and one charge of conspiracy. I want to know, did he actually have possession and sell and get money from or whatever? I don't know the details of it. He may have. I don't know. Hoover was remanded in the custody of the federal prosecutor. All right, here's the stickler. And I showed my wife some of uh, his videos, and it, it, she's like, that guy's not very uh, uh, threatening. Hoover was remanded in the custody because the federal prosecutor stated she felt personally threatened by Mr. Hoover. Irvin has been in federal custody for the last two years and will remain in custody. The men will be held until the sentencing on July 31st. His wife has got to be going nuts. His kids have got to be just unbelievably wondering what in the world is going on with daddy. Because a year ago, he was just happy-go-lucky Matt Hoover, okay? Let me know what your thoughts are down below. I just, I feel for that young man. I, I, I've, I've had a lot of my friends come out and they say, well, you know, you, you get what you deserve, but you know, some people are just, they don't, maybe not, they didn't think about what they were doing, which caused this whole thing to happen. So y'all let me know what your thoughts are down below. I'll put the link to John Crump's uh, YouTube channel down there. If you haven't been subscribed, he's a really good looking fella. Uh, take a look at his pictures. <laughs> as well as I'm going to put the link to the Emma Land uh, article down here that he wrote. That being said, guys, we always end up like this. And guys, when I say men and women in uniform, I'm talking about the ones in the camouflage, okay? A lot of people don't like that. Yeah, I served, so I kind of have a thing for my fellow uh, military guys. God bless America. God bless us men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedoms. Freedom is not free. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And that's it, man. And in the infamous words of the real Cobra burnout, <laughs> y'all be good. I'm out here. Boom.